Hi hey folks, thanks for joining me back on the Simplex, what I believe to be model PB, the 6 volt version. See I got the knob removed off the front and outside this uh, chassis cabinet has so much uh, crap in it. I'm going to actually uh, remove it outside. You can see the nomenclature there for the powering configuration. Again, I think this is going to just be a 6 volt in the AW2 to the right, we'll explore that more as probably just the synchronous vibrator with the transformer sitting behind that. We get these old rusty fasteners off and uh, we'll pull this thing out, take a look at it together. And just to keep the loudspeaker in place right now inside the cabinet, I'm going to just cut the lead wires to each terminal just to uh, simplify things for now. All right, struggling a little bit here, doing my best to get the chassis out. Just with one hand here while I'm holding the uh, camera. And uh, kind of a tight fit, the way they've uh, got the cabinet built in relationship to that uh, metal can, which you can see that houses the transformer on the right side, and then the IF transformer here on the left side. So I think I'm about there. It seems, again, a tight fit. Some of that may be some warping as well to the uh, base of the cabinet due to uh, water damage. And looks like we've got some stuff left behind. You guys heard me say, I heard stuff rattling around in there. Looks like a lot of acorn shells. So it may have been wrong about a sea mist, maybe surrounded by oak trees. And the mice use this as a mouse house at some point during its uh, life. Let's flip it over now, see what we've got underneath more leftover uh, acorns and acorn shells. Looks like the nuts are gone for the most part. And pretty clean underneath actually, except for looks like some damage due to some chewing. I'll get in there and get a closer look at that. But definitely uh, you can see some mice have uh, been in here at some point. Probably the leading cause of the rust on top of the chassis, just my guess. And much debris here to clean up inside the old cabinet as well. I think I'll blow it out, just get out in the uh, woods here, throw on my N95 mask so I'm not sucking this down my uh, throat. And uh, blow what I can off and then clean the rest of it off once I get inside the shop with some disinfectant wipes. I got the chassis in a little bit better condition now and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, tube complement that we've got in here. Again, the tubes that are in place may or may not be correct. So I'll just pull them out and check them as we go. And we have a 38 and the cool thing is the tube socket itself is marked 38. So we'll assume that to be correct at this location. And let's see what we have over here. The tube shield is missing. Hopefully this one's marked as well. And we have a six delta six, six delta six. And that matches the tube socket as well. You guys will see too, I'm just prying up on the uh, grid cap on the tube itself. 
And let me see if I can get the uh, tube shield off, the old goat tube shield. Okay, so it looks like we've got a unconditional guarantee, one full year on the tube. See if I can make out this date over here. That'd be cool. A 75 tube. And that matches the uh, tube socket back over here as well. And let me see if I can just pull this out with the shield attached here. And I can't make out the tube number on the base at this point. Okay, and the oscillator tube 6 alpha 7. So definitely the uh, receiver would work off of a uh, 6 volt source. Let's see if I can get down in here and see if that matches the uh, nomenclature as well on the tube socket itself. And one more plug-in device. It's earmarked AW2. Let me uh, throw my gloves back on and we'll see if I can pull this out and if this thing is seated in a tube socket. And a bunch of stuff on the underneath side there that needs to be cleaned off. I'll have to look up the uh, patent numbers. Probably a synchronous vibrator and most likely the uh, step-up transformer for the uh, B plus voltages for the tubes. Let me jot these down and do some research. So we got a few noteworthy things under the chassis that uh, I find interesting. You can see it looks like the original capacitors and uh, resistors for the period of time. You can see where the, uh, the mice uh, chewed away here at some of the uh, paper on the capacitors, which is not uncommon in addition to the uh, wire going over to the switch from the uh, battery itself. And then uh, probably most concerning, we'll have to figure out what this actual coil does, but you can see they've uh, eat through the uh, Litz wire on this coil. I'll uh, zoom in and show that in a side-by-side -side or picture as well. And this conductor here seems odd. There's a, a center conductor here, and then there's an outer conductor that's attaching here, and this one goes nowhere. So I don't know if that's by design or not. We'll find out maybe in time. Uh, you guys saw the uh, synchronous uh, vibrator. Again, a 6-volt source. The clue, again, being the uh, tube heaters or filaments. So um, I'll spend some more time, I think, just documenting the receiver. See if I can kind of hand draw a schematic and match this up against a uh, published schematic in Writers identify the differences and um, see what it's going to take to get this thing back together, if that's even possible. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. A quick update before I conclude the video. I started with the power supply section, and I'm up to the uh, choke and electrolytic capacitors. The synchronous vibrator did not... Uh, turn on. I could hear the relay clicking, figure the uh, contacts were kind of stuck together. That's what I found. So just a little cleaning inside after opening the uh, synchronous vibrator open. And um, seems to uh, work. Who knows how long it will work. But um, here we go. Thanks for watching.